Hello my sweet friends, welcome back. Today we are here with the annual birthday book unboxing, which is just so exciting. This is like the one time a year where I really let myself go all out and just buy pretty much any books that I've had my eye on or that I've been wanting or did just sound good to me. I mean, I definitely still buy books all year round, but yeah, my birthday is kind of where I go all out. So we have a bunch of packages, a bunch of packages to open. And then I also did quite a bit of damage in store. I went to Big W, but I also went to QBD, but they're all in this bag. So we have some online stuff, some in-store stuff. We also have some from publishers, which I am so grateful for. But yeah, it was my 20 26th birthday a few days ago and I had the best day ever. I feel so extremely loved. Thank you so much to any of you who wish me happy birthday. Probably one of my favorite birthdays ever. I just got to hang out with my friends, hang out with Liam, eat a bunch of good food, have a little tea party. It was so much fun. But let's just jump straight into it. I do have a few books. These are all from publishers and for one reason or another, I don't know why they're not in their package, but I'll show you these ones first. First up we have The Fake Out by Stephanie Archer. This is the sequel to Behind the Net. And and these were recently traditionally published by Hachette. So Hachette sent this one my way, which I am so thankful for. I read Behind the Net and I liked it. It was okay, but it wasn't a favorite of mine. But hopefully I might like this one even more. I do love the cover though. I think it's such a beautiful book. All I know is that it's a sports romance. I don't know anything else about this one. Oh, fake dating, apparently. I guess we'll have to wait and see. This one I am extremely excited about. This is an arc for Ali Hazelwood's newest book coming out in June. How cool is this arc we have this cover and then we have the actual front cover like behind here which I just I love that I think it's so fun I have enjoyed every single book that I've read from Ali Hazelwood so I am very excited to pick this one up I think she's going back to her roots with this one it's just like a, a science-y rom-com it says on the front that it's dual POV enemies with benefits forbidden romance that sounds so good to me and angsty love story so I'm gonna have to read this soon and let you guys know my thoughts but she does she just like kills it with the science romance and specifically she just knows how to write them and I eat it up every time. So yeah, very keen to check this one out. Next we have one that I don't really know anything about. It's called Deep is the Fen and I have the little publisher note here, but it says a bewitching journey behind the closed doors of a secret society, which sounds so good, featuring sinister toad men, not really sure what that means yet, very intrigued, resistance witches and a steamy enemies to lovers romance. And this one is YA fantasy. So I love YA fantasy. I'm extremely intrigued to check this out. The Secret Society really has me hooked, honestly. Like, I want to know more about that. And this one comes out on the 16th of April if you want to get your hands on it. So keep an eye out for this one. And lastly, for this little pile, we have The Prisoner's Throne by Holly Black. I'm so, 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 so excited to read this one. I love the folk of the air world and just like the, the fairy lands that Holly Black has created in this universe. If you don't know what this book is about, we have the main folk of the air trilogy, which is like the cruel prince and that little three book series. And then Holly Black wrote a little spin-off series. So it's a little duology. This is the second book in the duology. It recently came out like a couple weeks ago. But the first book in this duology is called The Stolen Heir. And in that book, we follow Ren and Oak. And Oak is one of the main characters from the original trilogy. It's her little brother. I don't want to say much more than that because I feel like it could actually spoil things in The Cruel Prince. But I really enjoyed the first book. It wasn't like as good as the original trilogy to me, but I had a lot of fun. And I've seen some really good like honestly mixed reviews about this one but I've heard a lot of good things and I think I'm just gonna eat it up. I think anything in this world I just I'm just gonna love. Fun fact The Cruel Prince was my first ever fantasy read as an adult and it's still one of my favorite series like I love that series so much. Do we want to get into physical shopping or packages next? Maybe packages? This one I have no idea who this is from. Things often go through my manager so I don't know that they're coming so I guess we'll just see. I didn't bring scissors with me either so this is going to be interesting your next fey romantic obsession is here this is packaged so beautifully oh i have seen this in bookstores recently and it looks so interesting oh a sticker that's so cute wait a second wait is this signed <laughs> This is signed by the, well, I mean, I think it's a digital signature, but that is still incredible. And we have a few little bits and pieces, a little like 
character art. Oh my gosh, that is beautiful. I think I actually downloaded this on my Kindle a couple months ago and I just like didn't get to it, but I saw people talking about it on TikTok. So this is for sale now. This is an ARC copy, but I'm very intrigued by this. If you guys have read this, please let me know your thoughts and let me know if I should. Oh, it's part of a series, The Infatuated Fae Book One. Another gorgeous cover. I feel like the fantasy book covers recently have just been gorgeous. I'm obsessed with all of them. A Forbidden Obsession, Unyielding Family Allegiance, Three Deadly Challenges. That sounds really good. And like a little pile behind me. Next up, we have this one from HarperCollins. <gasps> a little lint bunny. This must have been for Easter. Like I said, I haven't opened these packages for like a month or so. I've been like saving them. HarperCollins always like wraps their publisher mail and it makes it so fun. Feels like I'm opening a present. Oh my gosh, this is another one that I have been looking at in the bookstore recently. I almost picked it up, honestly, kind of recently. I have another book by this author and I haven't read it yet. So maybe I need to read that one first. But this cover, again, it's so beautiful. This is called Fool Me Once by Ashley Winstead. And I have no idea what it's about. Battle of the Exes. Lee learned one big lesson, never trust men. Four major heartbreaks set her straight, from her father cheating on her mother, all the way to Ben Lederman in grad school, who wasn't actually cheating, but she could have sworn he was, so she reciprocated in kind. What? So she cheated because she thought he was cheating? I don't feel like that's how it works, but okay. Then Ben shows up five years later working as a policy expert for the most liberal governor in Texas history, just as Lee is trying to get a clean energy bill rolling. Things get complicated and competitive as Lee and Ben are forced to work together. Tension builds as old sparks reignite, fanning the flames for a romantic dust-up the size of Texas. I'm intrigued by this. Again, if you've read this, let me know your thoughts. Next up, we have an Amazon package that I ordered. We have two books in here. The first one is The Gilded Wolves. Oh, I love the colors on this. This is a book that's on my 24 books I want to read in 2024. It is a series that I've heard incredible things about and it just sounds absolutely fascinating. Together with a band of unlikely experts, Severin sets off to explore the dark glittering heart of Paris. What they find might change the course of history but only if they can stay alive. That sounds super good. I feel I feel, I could be wrong, I could be wrong. I feel like I may have heard people compare this to Six of Crows. I'm assuming it's a bit of like a heist or like band of experts work together to complete a mission type thing. I'm not sure, but it sounds really good to me. So I'm excited. And then the other book in this package is one that I am so intrigued to read. Is this kind of new? I've only seen it around kind of recently, but I don't know too much about it. It's called A Tempest of Tea. I've seen it everywhere, but I haven't heard any reviews on it. But I read the back in a bookstore recently and it just sounded absolutely fascinating. Also, the author of this book is the author of We Hunt the Flame. I haven't read that, but I've heard good things about it. So it says that our main character is a criminal mastermind and collector of secrets. Her prestigious tea room transforms into an illegal blood house at night, catering to the vampires feared by society. But when the tea room and its secrets come under threat, Threat, Arthi must lead a gang of outcasts in a high stakes heist to the sinister vampire underworld. Again, heist, band of thieves working together, hopefully some found family elements potentially. Sounds right up my alley. And again, I love the cover. I'm actually scared because after this, my TBR is not only going to be huge, but it's also just going to be so full of so many books that I cannot wait to read. Like I don't know how I'm going to like choose what I want to read next because everything just looks so good. We have a ravioli package here. That's what I call these ones because it looks like a giant ravioli. <sighs> Gorgeous. I don't know what this is. Oh, this is from a publisher. Anita De Monte Laughs Last. Again, beautiful cover, beautiful colors. We have the little publisher note here. A first generation Ivy League student uncovers the genius work of a female artist decades after her suspicious death in this memorizing novel from the New York Times best selling author. This came out 3rd of April. Sounds really interesting. So, is it like a mystery? So, the original death happened in 1985. And then in 1998, the art history student is kind of like figuring it all out. That actually sounds really interesting. I don't think it's something that I would like see in a bookstore and think to pick up, but the 
the premise of it sounds really interesting because it's kind of like a bit of a mystery element. It also says on the back that the main character gets involved with an older art student and kind of finds themselves like rising in the ranks of this art college world, I guess. And I think she has to choose between like, do I want to keep my reputation and continue climbing the ranks or do I want to kind of like figure this out and like set things straight? So it sounds like a bit of a moral dilemma as well. Fascinating. We have another Amazon package here. We also have, oh my gosh, it really aggravates me when you order books online and they send it and they bend the cover. That's so frustrating. Okay, the first book we have in here with our, this is so frustrating. I'll just have to straighten it out. We have Anatomy by S S Sana Schwartz. Sana Schwartz. Again, beautiful cover. So it looks like a heart, but it's also a girl sitting with her dress sprawled around her. A lot of people recommended this to me because I recently read the Stalking Jack the Ripper series, which is about a girl who studies autopsies and is obviously like trying to figure out how people died based on those autopsies, but also because of that gets tied up in a bunch of murder mysteries. And that one was also set, I think in the Victorian era, where women really weren't supposed to have a high level education. So it was quite scandalous for her to be studying that and I just loved that series and a lot of people were like oh you should read anatomy because it has a similar kind of premise so I think again yeah we're following Hazel who wants to be a surgeon more than she wants to be married and then we're following Jack who is a resurrection man what does that mean who's just trying to survive in a city where it's too easily to die I think someone said that she pretends to be a boy so that she can go to school and like get this education because again I'm assuming it's set in a time where women weren't supposed to have education oh a resurrection man is someone who like digs graves is it interesting i think this is a duology we have anatomy and the other book that is also very beautiful which i can't think of the name of right now i only bought the first one just so i could like see if it's something that i like i always was told that this is like ya horror and that always seemed like something that didn't sound good to me because i used to see it in the bookstores all the time and used to be like oh i love that cover i want to read that but yeah someone told me it was ya horror and i was like ah oh, that just doesn't sound like it would be up my alley but then obviously i read a similar kind of premise in stalking jack the ripper and i loved it so i'm gonna give it a chance and see oh it's blurbed by maureen johnson who is the author of the truly devious series which I absolutely love and her little review says diabolically delightful a love story a murder mystery and a horror novel bound up together in ghoulish stitches that sounds so good and the other book we have in here I'm so excited about this this is house of salt and sorrows and I don't know too much about this apart from that I read the back of it in a bookstore when I was book shopping recently and it sounded so fascinating. I have no idea what the reviews are like for this book. It, I literally just picked it up and I was like, this sounds so good. So I decided to order it for myself for my birthday. But on the back it says, in a manor by the sea, 12 sisters are cursed. Annalie lives a sheltered life at Highmore with her sisters. Once there were 12, but loneliness fills the grand halls now that four of the girls' lives have been cut short, each death more tragic than the last. Disturbed by a series of ghostly visions, Annalie becomes increasingly suspicious that her sisters' deaths were no accidents. The girls have been sneaking out every night to attend glittering balls, dancing until dawn in silk gowns and shimmering slippers, and Annalie isn't sure whether to try and stop them or to join their forbidden trysts. Because who or what are they really dancing with? Doesn't that sound so interesting? Obviously I could be very wrong, but I am assuming that this is like a reimagining of like the 12 dancing princesses, like fairy tale story type thing. But that just sounds so Good. The premise got me invested straight away. Lastly, for the packages, we have this box. This is from Booktopia. Um, I had a gift card from Booktopia, so so I obviously ordered a few from here. Let's hopefully get a satisfying pull from this one. I give it a five out of ten. And then da -da -da. that is always so satisfying to me. We have five books. <laughs> I'm so excited! The first books that I see are both part of the same series. So we have books three and four in the Bridge Kingdom series. I started reading the Bridge Kingdom last year, I think. I read the first two books and I just like never continued. I don't really know why. I really enjoyed the first two books, but they weren't like my favorite fantasy reads ever. It's like a romantic series, by the way, if you're unaware. I don't know if there are more books coming or if like these two books are the end. I haven't really looked into it, but I know 
know that I'm pretty sure this is like where we're up to in terms of like published work. So the first two books in the series follow one couple and as far as I'm aware the next two books, these two books, follow a different couple but I'm assuming it's just going to be a romance fantasy with political aspects. That's what the Bridge Kingdom is. I'm assuming that's what this is but I guess we'll wait and see. I'll need to read a bit of a recap I think of the first two books because I don't remember much really. Like they were so much fun but they're not ones that have like stuck with me, you know? These do look so good though and I'm really excited to continue the series. Like look how pretty they're all gonna look on my shelf all together. Gorgeous. I was also debating getting Danielle L. Jensen's latest release. It's called Inked in Inked by Fate or something. Inked in Blood. Inked by Fate. I don't remember. Beautiful cover but I've heard kind of bad reviews about it. Like I think most of the reviews I've read or like heard from people that I generally you know like watch videos from or whatnot haven't been the best so I was kind of like mm, maybe I won't read that but let me know if you really liked it because I'd love to know. Next up in this pile, we have another book that's on my 2024 TBR and this is Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. I really like this cover. I know there's a few different covers for this book, but I'm glad I got this one. The reason why I am so excited to read this is because any time I mention any sci-fi book, like any sci-fi book that I've read or I want to read, people are like, oh my gosh, if you like sci-fi, you have to read Project Hail Mary. And also a lot of the booktubers that I watch, even the ones who aren't super into sci-fi have loved this like one of the book tubes I watch is like I don't really like sci-fi but I loved this and that like I just I need to know I need to know what this is about I, I need to I feel like I've heard really good things about the audiobook as well so maybe I'll listen to this one but I actually have no idea what it's about all I know is it's sci-fi and that everyone seems to love it it seems to just have like a very overall positive consensus on the back it says Ryland Grace is the sole survivor on a desperate last chance mission and if he fails humanity and the earth itself will perish. That is a lot of pressure. I would be very stressed. But right now he doesn't know that. Oh, well, maybe he's not stressed. All he knows is that he's been asleep for a very, very long time and he's just working to find himself hurtling through space millions of miles from home. It's up to him to puzzle out an impossible scientific mystery and he's got to do it alone, dot, 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 or does he? And it also says an ally he never imagined. Okay. I haven't read a lot of sci-fi. I've read the Lunar Chronicles, the Renegade series, the Red Rising trilogy, like the original trilogy, and Ready Player One. Like that is my extent of knowledge on sci-fi, so I'm intrigued. I also think this is on my 2024 TBR. This is The Storied Life of AJ Fickery. I know that a bunch of Gabrielle Zevin's books have been like republished and like the cover has changed and I am so happy I got this cover. I love it. It kind of matches the Tomorrow, Tomorrow, Tomorrow cover. And if you guys don't know, I was obsessed with Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. I read it last year, end of last year, towards the end of last year and I loved it. Five stars for me. I still think about it all the time. It was just so well done. We read it in our book club and all of my friends loved it. It's the only book that we've all rated five stars. And then obviously I saw the book girlies talking about this. I think Hayley read it first and then Destiny read it. And I don't read a lot of just like general fiction, but because I love Tomorrow, Tomorrow, Tomorrow so much, I thought, why not give this a chance? AJ Fickery, the grumpy owner of Island Books, is going through a hard time. His bookshop is failing, he has lost his beloved wife, and a prized rare first edition has been stolen. But one day, AJ finds two-year-old Maya sitting on the bookshop floor with a note attached to her asking the owner to look after her. His life and Maya's is changed forever. That actually sounds really good. The pile is getting taller. And the last book that was in this package is kind of like a a, a bit of a random choice, but this is called Only a Monster by Vanessa Lynn. I don't remember a single thing about this. I think I just ordered it because it sounded really interesting. Don't forget the rule. No one can know what you are what we are. You must never tell anyone about monsters. Every family has its secrets, but the summer Joan Chang Hunt goes to stay with her gran in London. She learns hers is bigger than most. The Hunts are one of 12 families in London with terrifying hidden powers. Joan is half monster. And what's more, her summer crush Nick isn't just a cute boy, he's hiding a secret as well, a secret that places Joan in terrible danger. It sounds like a lot of secrets, it sounds like a bit of a forbidden romance potentially. Let me know if you've read it. Let me know thoughts. That is all for the packages. Moving on to the damage that I did in store. Honestly, I did a lot. I did a lot of damage in store. Like I said, it's kind of like the one time a year I let myself go 
crazy. But maybe I went a bit too crazy, honestly. <laughs> of course, I had to pick up The Reappearance of Rachel Price by Holly Jackson. If you guys don't know, Holly Jackson is the author of The Good Girl's Guide to Murder and Five Survive. I've really enjoyed everything she's published so far, so of course I had to pick up her newest release. It came out really recently and I saw it in the store and I was like, of course I have to get this. Like, there's absolutely no doubt about it in my mind. So apparently this is about an 18-year-old girl called Belle and her mum went missing when she was really young, but recently the story has kind of come up again, or like the cold case I guess has like come up again because someone wants to film like a true crime documentary of this story and so obviously Belle is like roped into it because of that. And I love the way that Holly Jackson uses like mixed media kind of things like if you read a good girl's guide to murder she has like clippings from newspapers and like photos that are like evidence from the police and it makes you feel like you're actually like fully immersed in an investigation like she does a great job at using different things in her books to create a very consuming experience and so i'm hoping this will be somewhat similar and i guess if it follows like a true crime documentary type thing there'll be you know like interviews and different things like that so i'm excited to see what i think of this holly jackson is yet to miss for me personally so hopefully this is just another really good story. Another YA book that I picked up is Where Sleeping Girls Lie and this is the newest release from the author of Ace of Spades which I read a few years ago and loved. I really really enjoyed Ace of Spades. I was also watching Carrie Can Read's new video where she was just talking about all of her latest reads and she can convince me to read anything I swear. She has the best recommendations and she was talking about this and she really liked it and she also just described the premise of it and I was like I am sold. So when I saw it in the store I was like absolutely you're coming home with me but apparently this is about a girl who moves into a boarding school and she's like new there and very quickly she gets wrapped up in some sort of is it a murder mystery or just like a disappearance oh no a student is found dead <laughs> but yeah she gets caught up in that very quickly and obviously was not expecting to but the idea of like a murder mystery set at a boarding school just sounded absolutely fascinating to me and i really loved this author's writing in ace of spades and just like the storyline in general so of course i had to pick this up next i picked up the invocations by crystal sutherland this is my book club's book for april so i just wanted to pick up the physical copy so i could read it of course but i'm intrigued i haven't read anything from this author i don't know much about what this is about. I know that it's witchy. I know that it's maybe like mystery vibes. It's YA fantasy. I remember it being like three girls, one something. Three girls, one supernatural killer on the loose. And that's all I need to know. I'm hoping this is a good one. I, I'm excited to read that and just be able to talk to the girls about it in a couple weeks when we have book club. What else do we have in this bag of goodies? Okay, we have a romance. I feel like, have I not shown, I think I've shown like one or two romances. I'm definitely in my fantasy era at the moment. That is just what I am itching to read what I'm just like obsessed with and so that's like mostly what I picked up but we do have a fun little romance this is In the Weeds by BK Borison this is the second book in the I don't know what the name of the series is called is it just like the Love Light Farms series but I read Love Light Farms in December last year and I liked it I wasn't obsessed with it but I thought it was it was a fun little time and so I wanted to pick up the next book and see what I thought it's set in the same town and it just follows a different couple I guess that lives in this small town actually it follows a guy who is like a farmer in the small town and then a girl who doesn't like necessarily live there but comes to visit. You meet both characters in the first book and I think this takes place on the same like timeline as the first book because it takes place during the like social media contest that happens in the first book. So is it the same like timeline? Just like different POVs? I'm intrigued. The characters were really fun in the first book so I'm excited to read their love story. And then another like fun little romance that I picked up is Swift and Saddle by Lila Sage. Of course I had to pick this up. I read Done and Dusted last year and I really enjoyed it. I don't think it's like the best romance I've ever read but it's such a vibe. Like it's just a good little palette cleanser. These books are really short as well but I think in this book we're following the brother of the main girl in the first book and then his love interest. I don't know who she is. I think she comes to work for him. I feel like I've heard people say she's like an interior designer or something along those lines but I love this cover so much. The covers of this series in general are beautiful. This is also like a cowboy kind of romance. The family like the main family lives on a ranch so it has a similar vibe to the chestnut spring series so if you've read that series and you want just 
just, I don't want to say it's the same because it's not the same, but like something that gives a similar vibe. This is a great series to pick up. Next, we have another fantasy book. This is All This Twist of Glory by Tahara Mafi. This is the third book in the This Woven Kingdom series. I think it's still going. I don't think this is the last book. I don't know how many books it's going to be total, but I read This Woven Kingdom and these Infinite Threads last year and really enjoyed them. I think they were like four star reads for me. They're like fantasy romance. They definitely, like if you know Tahara Mafi, she is the author of the Shatter Me series. It's a very different vibe to Shatter Me, but still very good in my opinion. But if you don't know what this book is about, in the first book we follow this girl who is working as a servant, but she's kind of like a secret princess. Like she's a really important person, but she's kind of like hiding in plain sight kind of thing, like working as a servant. And there's a prince and I'll leave it at that. I feel like it doesn't have great reviews. Like, I feel like most people are like, yeah, it's 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 fine. And I kind of feel the same. Like, I'm like, oh, I enjoyed that. That was good. But it's not, like, my top favorite fantasy series. But it's good enough for me to want to continue. So I guess that tells you all you need to know. Okay, guys, we're almost done. Three books left. We have another little book that I wanted to continue the series of. This is Two Twisted Crowns by Rachel Gillig. I own One Dark Window. Have I read it? No. Is it on my TBR for this month? Yes, so hopefully I will read it this month. And usually I don't love to buy like other books in a series when I haven't read the first one, but I was like, it's only a duology. Surely I can just buy the second one. I feel like with duologies, even if it's not great, I want to finish it. Like I want to read the second one, even if the first one isn't great, which I think the first one will be good, don't get me wrong, but I just wanted to have the second book now because I feel like it could be one of those books where I finish the first one and just want to read the second one straight away. I've also heard that most people like the second book more. I'm really hoping I get to these books this month. I feel like I'm so late on the bandwagon with these. Like, these had their like moment like months ago and I'm I'm missing out. I mean maybe I won't love them but maybe I will and maybe I've been missing out all these months you know guys this is a bit ridiculous. Okay another one that I am so excited to read I've had my eye on this book for so long is this one it's called Trial of the Sun Queen and I saw like when this got traditionally published I saw it posted I think it was posted on Hachette's Instagram if you want to know like like what's getting published what's coming out follow publishers on Instagram because they always obviously like keep everything updated and have all the announcements and it's so fun to see what's coming out and seeing all the new books and this one was pitched as something meets The Bachelor I can't remember what the other one was but that got me so hooked like I was like you have sold me but for some reason it took me a long time to pick it up but I have picked it up now again one of my books on my 24 books I want to read in 2024 but on the back it's says 10 women a deadly contest only one can win the sun king's heart i could be making this up and this could be so wrong but i am hoping again could be so wrong i am hoping this is like an adult version of the selection i could be so wrong it might not be at all but i'm hoping that's the vibe that it gives because it also says later on perfect for fans of sarah j mass fourth wing and the hunger games and to me that sounds really good i think the second book is out i don't know if there are more books like i don't know how many books are in the series i really haven't looked into it i just heard bachelor hunger games and i was like sign me up that sounds absolutely phenomenal and the last book we have <laughs> for my birthday book haul is one that I am so excited about. This is The Crimson Moth. This was only recently published, so it's a bit of a newer release, but the main reason that I picked this up is Freya, if you're watching this, she is one of my mutuals on TikTok. She's another Aussie book girly. Love her content. She has been raving about this book. I think she might have got the arc for it, and she read it, and she was like, oh my gosh, everyone needs to read this. She really sold me on it. Based on the other books that she loves, I think we have similar taste. I think at least like the fantasy books that I hear her talk about. I'm, I usually like the same ones as her So I'm so excited about this Freya. This is completely your doing. I've heard incredible things about it to be honest again Do I know what it's about literally nothing? No, I don't so it looks like it's about witches And it seems like it's taking place after a revolution where witches became outcasts and hunted due to their magic guys This actually sounds so good listen to this spending her days pretending to be nothing more than a vapid young socialite so is this like urban fantasy? If she's a socialite, I'm assuming she's like, I don't want to say Kardashian, but like Gossip Girl vibes. Rune spends her nights as the Crimson Moth, a witch vigilante who rescues her kind from being purged. When a rescue goes wrong, Rune decides to throw the witch hunters off her scent by courting the handsome Gideon Sharp. Except Gideon is a notorious and unforgiving witch hunter loyal to the revolution and falling for him would be deadly. That sounds so good. So she's a witch and she's dating a witch hunter, but pretending she's not a witch. 
I'm so excited for this. I'm so excited. Well, that is absolutely ridiculous on my part, I must say. I have a lot of reading to do. I love how I'm like, this year I want to read my physical TBR. And then I go and do that. Look, it was my birthday. It was my birthday. What can I say? To me, from me. I'm just a girl. I'm just a book girl, you know? But I hope you guys enjoyed watching this haul. Like I said, it's the biggest one of the year, so I, I hope you enjoyed it, because you won't see another one like this anytime soon. Probably not until next year, at least of this size. And hopefully you guys got some new recommendations out of this video, hopefully. Also, like I said earlier in the video, if you've read any of these books, please let me know your thoughts on them. If you want to see any of these books specifically, like, read in a reading vlog, or you want to see a video on any of these, please let me know, so I can make sure that I can try and include as many as possible in different little reading videos. I love you guys so, so much. Again, thank you for all the birthday love. I truly feel so spoiled, so loved. I'm just so thankful for all of you. I guess I'll see you guys, hopefully in a reading vlog very soon. I'm gonna have to ignore these until I've gotten through my monthly TBR because I'm, I should not start these. I should focus on my monthly TBR. Anyways, I'll see you guys in my next video. Goodbye.